Aloha everyone, it's Keenan and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about getting your first job as a construction engineer or structural engineer. So today I'll be joined by a fellow structural engineer and YouTuber Matt Picardo. And today we're going to be giving you tips about getting that first job and the realities of what you can do to give yourself the best chance of landing it. So again, there should be a lot of good information in this conversation. If you have any further questions about this topic, feel free to comment below and we'll be sure to reply to you. So the first step to getting your first job is to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And if you don't, you might not get that job. But now let's get into the video. What is your, uh, what is your tips on getting a job? Getting a job in the structural engineering field, for, uh, at least in the U.S. for sure, get try to get as a as as many uh internships as you can because not only is that going to solidify whether you want to work in the industry or not but it you know builds up your experience because that way you can get a better job uh hopefully when you graduate like an actual full-time job uh finding those uh is tough for me getting internships I sent out a lot of uh, resumes. Uh, didn't land any. My resume um, sucked <laughs> when I was a student. And that's how I got involved in, you know, I tried to build up my experience. I didn't have experience. So I tried to get some. Um, joining like ASCE and doing like uh, engineering competitions, getting involved in those engineering clubs. It's like, I think I was part of a, uh, you know, I was like an officer at Cal Geo, joined their engineering competitions for the, the Geo Wall competition. Uh, we did a seismic analysis on another project as well for like a wood balsa wood structure, and we put it on a shake table. Engineering projects like that, uh, just to build up my resume, uh, but it did more. It, it actually built up, you know, a group, working with a group, which is completely transferable once you get into the real world. So not only does it build up your communication skills, your teamwork skills, but it also builds your, uh, your resumes. And so once I got some of those things on my resume, that's when I started getting, you know, callbacks from uh, my first internships. That's how I got my first internships and doing what other people <laughs> aren't doing like, uh, it's well, the first, the common thing is to go on the internet, go on monster.com or indeed.com and just Google and then just send out your resume. Everyone's seeing those resumes. You're, you're competing with like 10,000 people on those. Like, even if you are like one of the best 10,000 people versus, and they can only pick one, like, I don't care how good you are. The chances are low that you're getting, you're getting that position. But the commercials um, make it look, so easy i know right? <laughs> <laughs> i just saw the one one the other day and i was like i don't know i don't know if anybody that's gotten a job off of indeed but this lady got it in the matter of minutes that's that 0.1 percent apparently yeah. or that one percent <laughs> and you know it works like try it i definitely do those you, you never know yeah uh, but for me what worked out the best was going to um, local firms, small firms that don't even have advertisements. Like I would just Google like small structural engineering firms near me and you can just get in contact with the owner directly instead of uh, trying to go through some whole system. You would just email the owner and just tell them, Hey, I know you don't have a position open, but if you need help, like right. I can intern for you. And that actually was a pretty good success rate. I got multiple interviews from that and got an internship from that. So, you know, start off small, like go where everyone else isn't going. And yeah. What, 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 what do you mean by your resume wasn't strong? What was not strong about your resume? You just look like everybody else in engineering school. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you took statics, concrete, uh, steel. So what? Uh, like everybody in your class has done that. Mm -hmm. What separates you? What makes you unique? So doing things that yeah, that, that take more work, but that show that you're serious about your profession and 
you you can work with people and stuff that looks good on your resume. I think that's at least that's something that could set you apart from the typical group of people because uh, you know, that's what employers look for. Like uh, an engineer that's good technically is, is everywhere. <laughs> so they're easily replaceable. You need someone that knows the, those classes, just go to any engineering school and you can find them. But if you're looking for an engineer that could be a potential leader in your firm or uh, maybe is like really smart and can work with people and can maybe make the clients happy or maybe can get clients in the future. That's for an engineer. That's tough. Like you find those qualities in an engineer and they're technical. Those are the ones that are going to be hard to replace. Uh, If you need someone technical, easy, just go to any engineering school. So that that's what I mean by like making your resume stand out. No, that's super. That's super. I, 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 I'm with you on the uh, going smaller, um, especially if you're not finding a lot of success. I think sometimes people try to get caught up and even, I don't know if you like their friends are getting all these jobs at all these big companies, things like that. If you really, really want it, you can go smaller and work your way up because a lot of times I think too, nowadays, even the bigger companies are starting to realize that GPA doesn't mean as much as it used to, especially in construction. Um, a lot of, but the bigger companies will look specifically at that because when they first see the applicant uh, fresh out of school, because that's all they have to judge them on. Um, but even construction, I think construction even more so. The 4.0 engineering students usually don't pan out well in construction because construction has a lot of nuances that 4.0 students can't really deal with. Um, like how do you, how does a 4.0 student typically handle a guy that accidentally flushes his shirt sleeve down the temporary toilet? And now you have to like <laughs> fix the line going up the entire tower, right? That's not a, <laughs> a 4.0 student. They, they don't have the tools to deal with, or not all of them, but a lot of times, right? The ones that have, and have only studied on their own and have, it's just not conducive typically to what construction ends up being. Um, so if you have a lower GPA, yeah, you might not be in the bigger companies at first, but once you get your first few years of experience somewhere at any company, that'll mean way more to any bigger company later on than if you're fresh out of school. So it's, uh, it's a very good tip, I think, to not focus on only, I guess, the bigger companies and try to get your experience in anywhere that you can. And once you get your foot in the door, it's, it's pretty easy from there. I would say. Is that what it's like in construction engineering? So I imagine with the construction engineering, you would go into, is it civil engineering or is there a construction engineering major or? Yeah. So if it's, if you're going to do construction engineering specifically, which I would consider like maybe more like formwork design or, um, yeah, just, just anything that you need for the job. Maybe you could even be for cranes and picking and rigging, things like that. Um, then, yeah, you would probably need the engineering, civil engineering degree background. If you want to work for a general contra- contractor like I do, you could get civil, you could get construction management, you could get, I mean, we, ha- we have someone that is a master's in teaching that is working for us as, an engin- as a project engineer right now. Um, so, but it's all about, but all the people that are there, they have the attitude to do the job, which is why I tell people is that if you didn't do super well in school, it's fine. Well, not fine, but it's, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. You can, if you have the right attitude, if you have the right work ethic, if you have the right mindset going into it, I mean, construction is, is all effort and you learn everything on the job. I mean, everything that I, that I know now. Basically is that came, what came from experience? Is that what uh, you think uh, general contractors uh, in general look for if they're recruiting like a, a construction engineer? Is uh, like how important are the grades, or is it just more about attitude and and whatnot? The bigger companies, I think, will focus more on the grades. The smaller companies, I think, focus more on the personality and the how how do they think this person is going to fit within the team. Um, 
because it, it, it is very important, especially on a smaller company. You only have so many people to run jobs. So one bad egg in the smaller group of people will affect the company more than one bad. Egg. I mean, you can have bad eggs in a bigger company that stay forever because um, you can just kind of fly under the radar. But it's, yeah, it's, I think they're realizing now that they need more people geared for the industry than they need more people that look good on paper. Um, so I'm starting to see, see more of that in the hiring process. So I don't know how long it's going to take to completely get away from it because those companies are all about, the bigger companies are all about managing their risk, right? So if you're good on paper, statistically, that's supposed to be what manages the risk. But once you, once you prove yourself, <laughs> yeah. once you prove yourself anywhere, then I've seen people kind of just go in because that's what you're proving at that point. So that's all they're looking for. Yeah. You have a good reputation on paper, but then when it, I think when it comes down to it, they put you out in the field with a group of people. Yes. Uh, how does that look? Yeah. That's <laughs> you know, a, it's, it's a completely different yeah. ball game. I mean, you can't, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, and that, and that, that can, that's why you can get a lot of clarity on like what Matt said, you can get a lot of clarity on what you want to do and getting yourself in the door through internships. So like for me, I would have been probably doing what Matt's doing if I didn't do my construction internship. That completely changed my entire career trajectory. And I'm super happy with that decision. Um, but everything in my life told me, you know, grade school, grade school, you know, be, be good in the classroom. And that kind of just funneled me into that. And then, oh, but I can build stuff. I can do, you know, that internship taught me what, what, what else I could do. And that fit my lifestyle and what I wanted more, to be more outside, to be more hands-on, uh, be part of the build rather than being the, what we could, may consider behind the scenes, right, of doing the design work and doing all the calculations and things like that. Thank you all for watching and I hope that you got something out of that video. If you have any further questions, please comment below and we'll do our best to reply to you. Once you get your foot in that door for that first job, it sets you up for your career. So hopefully it helped you out to point you in the right direction. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your time and we'll see you on the next video.